Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we have a couple of very interesting topics to discuss, but we'll start with this one, and this is basically a Chris Bumstead physique update. Well, okay, it's not really a physique update, it's just him showing us how sweaty he got in the gym, but also he's showing us his physique, you can see what his body fat percent is looking like, and you can see how big he is right now, at about 17 weeks out of Mr. Olympia, and uh, let's check it out, let's see what we got here. This is interesting because this guy is probably like the most popular bodybuilder in the world, he's our current classic physique Mr. Olympia champion, and he's probably gonna be there for a long time, but he rarely posts any physique updates, it's especially in the off-season. Why is that? Should we believe that he's actually pretty much natural in the off-season? I mean, he said that he's either completely off of everything in the off-season or he's doing like one shot of test a week, which is basically TRT. Should we believe that the best classic physique competitor in the entire world is doing just that? I mean, I don't know, man. It's hard to believe, honestly. Like, I know classic physique guys from around here, amateurs, and I know what they need to do to get to a certain level to compete in classic physique, which is not even close to Chris Bumstead's level. So, you know, it's kind of hard to believe that he's doing only that and that he manages to stay this strong when he is not blasting. So, I mean, yesterday I trained shoulders and I pressed like 90s, but 130, man, that's a lot. And Chris is not an open bodybuilder, he's not that heavy. Also, his squats, incredibly heavy weight. So, you know, it's kind of hard to believe that he's doing only that, but who knows, maybe he is an absolute freaking alien. So, as you can see right here, his physique, his body fat percent, his fullness, roundness, hardness, does he look like he's on a low dose of test and that's it? Well, a lot of people wouldn't look like this if they did only that, but if you consider the fact that Chris gets like this when he's blasting, then I guess it is believable. Whatever he's doing, he looks good for 17 weeks out, he has a long time to get fuller, bigger, rounder, drier, leaner, harder, and I'm sure when he does all that, he's going to look super, super impressive. He doesn't need to grow in the offseason, so he doesn't need to use a lot of gear, he should just stay lean, stay as big as possible using heavy weights and high quality food without using too much, too much gear. And, you know, it makes sense. It actually does make sense. So now when the time comes, he's going to blast it. And when he's in a big caloric deficit, he's going to use stuff to harden him up. So he's going to look impressive on that stage. And he's going to win another Mr. Olympia easily, I'm sure. All right, the next thing I wanted to talk about is Mikhail Krizo, who is uh, competing in seven weeks, actually. So if you guys didn't know, he, he made a YouTube channel, it's just Krizo. Just type that and you will find him. It looked like a pretty good channel. And as you can see right here, he announced that he's going to be competing uh, on 8th, 9th or 10th October. And he's like 7-8 weeks out of that show. And it's an amateur show. And I don't know, I feel like it's pretty ridiculous that a guy of this stature, the absolute best bodybuilder in the world's second best bodybuilding federation, needs to do an amateur show. This guy is absolutely not an amateur. He is going to be beating a lot of professionals in the IV Pro League. I mean, I get it, rules are rules, and he accepted that, he's gonna do an amateur show, but I just feel so sorry for all those amateurs in that show, that they're hoping they're gonna do something, and when this guy shows up, they're just gonna pack their bags and, like, go home, and they're gonna put Mikhail Krizo on the side, and just compare the others who's, uh, the, who's the second best, and, you know, see, see it from there, so this guy is definitely gonna win that, uh, that amateur show, and then he's gonna be competing uh, at the Prague show, which is gonna be a qualifier for the Mr. Olympia, which is what I was told by his manager. So as you can see right here, he looks great. Like he looks really big, really round, and conditioning is awesome for seven weeks out. Of course, he doesn't have to really go hard to win that show. That's gonna be a cakewalk for him, just a formality. It's not gonna be formality for other amateurs who are gonna be smoked which, again, is pretty stupid if you ask me, but it is what it is, he's gonna be doing that show, he's gonna win it easily, and then he's gonna do the Prague Pro, which I'm pretty sure he's going to win too, and honestly, I'm curious, I'm the most curious about what he's gonna look compared to Andrew Jacked, why him, why Andrew Jacked, well, that's because both of these guys came up this year, pretty much, and we didn't know what Andrew is gonna look like on stage, a lot of people had their doubts about him, and a lot of people are having their doubts about Michal Krizo, because we never saw these guys compared to the other pros, we didn't know what to expect. 
A lot of people thought that Andrew is gonna do very well, but did we really see that he is going to absolutely annihilate a bunch of really good guys? No, I don't think a lot of us saw that. So what can we exactly expect of Mikhail Krizo when you're watching him alone, right here, posing? He looks good, man, he looks really good, he's got it all pretty much. The back is probably his weakest point, but it's also Andrew's and it's not really that bad. Michal's glutes are pretty weak, but you know, other than that, like he is really complete, really impressive. And so I'm really curious, is the hype real, like it turned out to be with Andrew Jacked? A lot of people actually vouched for Andrew that he's gonna do really well and one of them was probably the most important one was Flex Wheeler and Flex was right and there are people who are saying the same thing about Mikhail like Milo Sharchev is saying Mikhail Krizo is the real deal he says T. Weinberger was impressed with him so is this guy going to annihilate another professional lineup? I'm really curious to see that it's gonna happen at the EVLS Prague Pro, which is happening later this year, and this is gonna be a freaking exciting year for bodybuilding. First, we saw Ander Jacked, and he really knocked us out of our socks. And I think the same thing is gonna be with Michal Krizo. Right now, he looks amazing. In seven weeks out, he's gonna be doing an amateur show, and later this year, a professional show. And hopefully, we'll see him at the Mr. Olympia. I'm not sure if it's gonna be this year or next year, but at some point, we're gonna see him compared to the best in the world, and we'll actually actually get to know where in the world Michal Krizo stands. What do you guys think though? Make sure to let me know in the comments, but if we are talking about Andrew Jack, as you can see, he commented this photo of James Hollingshead, and James Hollingshead is competing this year against some serious heavy hitters, one of them is Andrew Jack. Can he actually challenge Andrew Jack? I don't know, man. I'm not so sure. I don't think so, honestly. This is uh, this is James right now at around 275, and he's doing this prep without a coach. Actually, last year he was coached by Patrick Tour, and they completely missed that. P they completely destroyed his physique for the Mr. Olympia. Before that, they did a couple of shows. And he actually won two shows last year, one of them was British Grand Prix, the other one I think was Spain. And then later at the Mr. Olympia, he was flat as a pancake, actually he just burned too much muscle. And now his prep is, uh, he has different approach about his prep, so he has a cheat meal pretty much every week. And he doesn't do like high carb days, he doesn't do refeed days, he just eats a whole bunch of junk food. And that is his approach to this prep, as you can see he got really shredded. And he's talking about this approach, he says that it is needed for a guy of this size, with this crazy fast metabolism, in order to maintain fullness and all the size and get lean slowly enough, he needs to slow the process by having a couple of cheat meals here and there. I don't think he's wrong about this, I think he knows his body well enough and uh, it's working, it's working at this point, I don't know if he's gonna be able to do the last weeks by himself, usually bodybuilders mess that part up quite often, they can't be objective, so that's a good time to have a coach, maybe Patrick is gonna help him peak in the end, I don't know, maybe somebody else, but at this point he looks very lean, he looks big, he's around 275, as you can see, this is flat in the morning, so he does look good, is he gonna be an actual challenge to Andrew Jack, I think he's going to be a, a challenge, but that's about it, I think Andrew is gonna beat him. Here is another photo, so I have no doubts that James is going to be conditioned, that he's going to be big, that he's going to be freaking impressive, but, you know, it's just all about who he's going against. And considering the fact that we never saw Andrew at his 100%, as they say, he wasn't even 90%, and he's probably going to be at least 90 at the Iron Classic UK, he's probably going to destroy everybody, and if James somehow manages to beat him, that would mean that James is potentially like top 6 Olympian. And I'm a huge fan of James, I love his personality, I love his physique, I love what he's all about, he's a purist, he really loves bodybuilding for what it is, 
I love it when he comes to Fuad's podcast, and I know this guy is an absolute monster, he is so, so massive, he's so big, he knows how to get conditioned, he is like, probably, like, one of the 10 best bodybuilders in the world, but I feel like Andrew is potentially, like, top 5 in the world right now, so, I don't see James winning this Arnold Classic UK, even though I thought he was a top runner now with Andrew in the mix, now knowing what Andrew looks like in the lineup, yeah, I think Andrew is easily the top runner, but will we see James at a Mr. Olympia? I think it will be a shame not to see him, and I think we will, because he said he was gonna do a French show. First, he was supposed to do Italian Yamamoto Pro show, but there is another Yamamoto Cup uh, in French, and I think he's going to do that one, it's after Arnold Classic UK, so that's, uh, he already plans to do another show after Arnold Classic UK, so he probably knows that he, that he cannot beat Andrew, and he wants to get a Mr. Olympia qualification, I think he deserves to be at the Mr. Olympia stage, and he will be there, I believe that he will, and uh, I hope he's going to be in the top 10, again, top 10 in the world, it's really, really tough, he needs to be at 100%, to be top 10 in the world, but it's not impossible, That that's pretty possible, for him to beat Andrew, I think that's not really realistic, if you guys think otherwise, tell me in the comment section down below, but also please make sure to let me know what you think about uh, Mark Hector, also another guy from the UK, who is doing the Iron Classic UK, another guy with really bubbly muscle bellies, as you can see he has really round shoulders, round chest, uh, good arms, really small waist, he has crazy symmetry, crazy proportions, but there is a weakness that I'm seeing uh, in this shot, and that is the leg size. His legs are definitely not massive compared to his upper body. I think his upper body is kind of dwarfing his legs. It could be the angle, as you can see this photo was taken from above, so maybe his legs are just fine. And uh, this guy, I think he competed against James last year, and he, and he didn't beat even James. I think he progressed, so he has that kind of bubbly 3D look, and he has great separation right now, as you can see the chest is separated like crazy. And there is still plenty of time until the Arnold Classic, he can definitely change, he can definitely get more conditioned, even more impressive, and is that impressiveness going to be enough to win the Arnold Classic UK against Andrew Jack? Again, I don't think so, but I do have this guy in my top 3, right after James Hollingshead and Andrew Jack. Alright, next we have an update, an arm update of Nick Walker, so he posted this uh, gym photo doing the front double bicep, and he looks scary, you know, he looks freaky, he looks really big, really freaky, and what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to ask you guys, is he looking too freaky, too monstrous, because the size of his arms is just, I think it's a little bit too much, I spoke about this before, but I have to say it again, because I'm noticing that his arms are getting bigger by the week, I don't know what the hell is he doing to them, but take a look at that right arm and take a look at it, compare it to his head, compare the size of that, of that arm to his head, literally, his arms are bigger than his head, that, that's it, that's true, take a look at it, so <laughs> where is the limit, what is the proper symmetry, should your arms in the front double have more, more length top to bottom than your head? Is that normal? I don't think it is. A lot of you guys will be like, arms cannot be too big, but they definitely can. Especially when you have a weak chest. And Nick Walker's chest is definitely his weak point, so having enormous arms is gonna make his chest look even smaller. So if his goal is to have like the best arms in the history of bodybuilding, he's on a good road to that, if he wants that, if he wants to be just a freak bodybuilder, then good, that's a good approach, but if he wants to be the most complete guy on that stage, I think he should lay off the arm training, I don't know if you guys know, but there's a lot of bodybuilders who did something like this, for example, Ronnie Coleman stopped training arms altogether, because they were just getting too big, that's right, that's what Ronnie said, his arms are getting too big and they are ruining his symmetry, so he needs to stop training them, there is also an example of Flex Lewis, Flex had crazy leg genetics, so in order not to grow his legs too much, he stopped training them for like a year or two, he only trained his upper body, because as you can see, his legs were pretty much good enough, his upper body needed some catching up to do, and that's what he did, and then later he won 7 Mr. Olympias in a row in 2012, 
On the contrary, you have Tom Platts, who didn't want to do anything like that. He wanted to have one really impressive body part, and those were his legs, and now he's known for having the biggest legs in the history of bodybuilding. He never won the Mr. Olympia, but he's known for that, and I respect that, that's okay, if you want to do that, that's fine, that's your prerogative. Tom Platts really loved training, especially legs, especially doing squats, and I'm sure it wasn't easy for Flex either not to train his legs, it's fun. Training legs is the most challenging workout there is, nothing will challenge you in the gym like leg workout will, so I'm sure he had a lot of trouble not training his legs, also not making one of his best body parts even more dominant, but he wanted to be the Mr. Olympia winner, he had that, he had a potential. I'm not sure if Tom Platts would have won the Mr. Olympia if he did that, but I know Nick Walker has the potential to actually become the Mr. Olympia. He has pretty much all the tools necessary. The only tool that he doesn't really have is aesthetics, he doesn't have the prettiest shape, the prettiest proportions, lines, his varicose veins on his legs are definitely not helping his case, he is not the most aesthetic bodybuilder and that's why they will probably not let him win this Mr. Olympia, but it's not impossible, it's actually quite possible and he needs not to ruin this potential by becoming just a freaky arms guy. I don't know what his approach to arm training is, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have an arm day, I'm pretty sure he's just training them like after chest, after back, after shoulders, but it feels like he's doing a lot more than before, at least that's what he's posting on his social media, so I got an impression that he's training his arms more often now and that they are growing more rapidly than they used to when he was coached by Matt Jensen. I think Matt Jensen had more control over Nick, over his approach. I think he was advising him, he was actually giving him workouts and he wasn't putting a lot of arm work in those workouts and I think that was smart and I think that's why Nick did so well last year. Is he gonna do as well or better this year? We'll see, he has a new coach, I don't think this coach is uh, stopping him from growing his arms, I think his arms grew a little bit too much, and I'm not advising Nick Walker, who am I to advise him, I'm just, I'm just a fan who is uh, curious what's gonna happen, and it feels like this arm improvement is not gonna be a good thing, I think it's gonna be a bad thing for him, even though it looks crazy, I love to see it, when I see it I go wow on Instagram, but I don't know if the judges are gonna be crazy about this. Whatever you guys think though, and what would you do if you were the judge, tell me in the comment section down below, like this video if you enjoyed it, and for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys, thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.